Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cynthia and today we're going to be talking about finding rest in a world of busyness. I know that I feel I am totally, totally busy all the time. And I'll take today for example. I had to work from 8.30 to 5 and in the middle of that I'm doing so many other things. I literally just got home, had to hop on a meeting with one of my church groups and it's just like a never ending ordeal for me. So in today's video we're going to be talking about finding that rest, that time with God even though things around us continue to be busy. So as I was reading my devotional this week and last week, I came across the story of Martha and Mary. When Jesus comes into their house, Martha is the one very, very busy, and she's trying to prepare a meal for Jesus and his disciples. And Mary, what is she doing? We see her sitting at the feet of Jesus. So Mary seems like she was just caught up with all these different distractions, all this different busyness because she wanted to please Jesus. And sometimes I feel like we relate to Martha because we want to do our best and we want to please God in our faith walk, right? And sometimes we want everything to be just perfect. Sometimes we think like if we need to like earn God's approval, you know, that God needs to approve some sort of thing, not realizing that God died for us. And if he didn't love us, he wouldn't have done that. So why are we working so hard to get his approval? God died for me and for you. God died for the broken, for the sinful, and also for those who may not have a lot of time for him. And sometimes this makes us think of ourselves like maybe we're not worthy, we're not doing the right thing, or maybe we could be doing more, but God died for you exactly the way you are. And we find this in Romans chapter 5 verse 6. And honestly speaking, sometimes I look at my schedule and I see how I can kind of fit Jesus in there. The reality is that I need to make purposeful, focused time for him. And then there are also other times where just like Martha, we feel that we've done all this work and we get zero recognition from our kids, from our spouses, from our boss. We do so many things and it's not like we do it to try to get that recognition, but Validation is a better word, but being validated and being recognized, right? Not like you need to have an award or anything, but just something as simple as saying, thank you for doing that, or I really appreciate you helping with this project, or even our kids, right? They just gobble down their food instead of saying, thank you, mom, for preparing today's meal. Something so little sometimes starts affecting our walk. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom or you're a mom that works in the corporate world just like me, sometimes we feel like we're always working, we're cleaning, we're wiping, we're washing. Washing, we're cooking, we're doing so many different things and it's like people kind of expect us to do these things not knowing that we're human too and we want to have that satisfaction of knowing that I pleased you and you're grateful for that and it sometimes makes us feel like nobody cares. So what's the point of doing it, right? But recently I came to the conclusion that I don't do things for my husband. I don't do things for my kids, but I do them because I love God and I want to please him. So instead of arguing about dirty dishes or about clothes being on the floor or about something being out of place where I usually put it, I have been trying. Again, this is a work in progress. I have been attempting to just... <sighs> Take a deep breath and say, Lord, I'm doing this for you. I know that my son could have put his toys away. I know that my husband could have done this. I know that my coworker could have done that, but I'm choosing to do this for you. Again, I'm still working on this. So, I mean, there's really no best mom of the year award. Okay, I think maybe there is in like some kind of magazine, but in the real world, there isn't like a number one mom or the best mom of the year or the best wife of the year. There is no type of award, financial or a piece of paper that says that. But do we really need that? I mean, when we really think about it, sometimes we kind of feel invisible, even in our own home, right? Or at work or in whatever relationship that we're feeling in. 
Nobody wants to feel alone. Nobody wants to be invisible and nobody wants to be taken advantage of. And sometimes it hurts when we're doing all these things and nobody's watching. But our relationship with God is so amazing that we don't need to earn his approval. We don't need to earn his attention and we're the apple of his eye. He sees and knows us. He cares for us and he loves us. And we can definitely find rest in knowing just that he does. Going back to the story of Martha, Jesus responds to her with love, with tenderness, with gentleness, not in a reprimanding way, right? Not like Martha, you're doing the wrong thing. You need to come over here and be with Mary, right? But he treats her like, I know that you're trying your best. I know that you're doing this for me, but you can also be over here with Mary, right? At my feet. Jesus doesn't point out her wrong. And this was kind of a smack in the face for me because so many times we're trying to point out the wrong in other people, especially in our kids. I'm guilty of that, right? But God doesn't point out her wrong. To simply put it, Jesus was hungry and he was tired. Who knows how many things he had encountered in the day. And Martha wanted to be the best host ever. What we need to understand about the Jewish people is that they took their hospitality like to the next level, right? So the best way form of adoration that she thought she could show to Jesus was preparing him the best meal, making him feel so comfortable because they were hungry and tired after being out there and preaching to the crowd. So I'm talking to all the people that like me are the let's go get it done, the ones with the to-do lists, the ones that are never sitting still because there's always something to do. God loves your work ethic and he really appreciates everything you do. But it does become a problem when we become consumed with it all instead of focusing on what the real joy, what the real treasure was, which was Jesus who was standing right in front of her. So we get so busy with all this busyness of our lives that we forget that God should be the core of our lives, not just an add-on or an extra app on our phone. So just like Jesus told Martha, we need to just have rest and sit at Jesus' feet. Everything else can get done eventually. I grew up thinking that everything had to be done at a certain time when the person said it. In my marriage, I've started to realize that if my husband gets it done eventually, depending on what it is, right, that it's okay with me. I don't have to have my husband or myself mop every single day because number one, I have a dog. We have a big backyard with a whole bunch of sand and the the floor is going to get dirty again, right? I don't have to worry about my husband putting his computer away while he was going to school because I know that he's going to use it the next day, right? I don't have to worry about the dishes being done right away because I know hopefully eventually they're going to get done, right? So these are things that we're going to have to put to the side and really focus on what really matters. And so that's exactly what Jesus was saying. Yes, I'm hungry. Yes, we want you to serve us, but just come sit at my feet for a little bit. Just spend time with me. Just just enjoy the fact that we're here and we can just fellowship as friends because the invitation to sit at Jesus' feet is always open. Sometimes I feel like our culture really glorifies busyness, right? Like we wear it with pride. Like if somebody asks you, oh, how was your day? You're like, oh, I'm really, really good. But today was so busy. Actually, I was talking to my sister today and she's like, so what are you so busy about? And I was like, well, I had to do this and that and that. And I had to get this done. And then I just got home and now have another meeting and I'm just so exhausted. And it's kind of like a badge of honor, um, not knowing that it's actually stealing years away from our lives and stealing joy and happiness that should be in the place of our homes, right? Instead of like stress and busyness. And so a lot of people take pride like I do, which I know I need to work on this. And that's why I'm creating this video, not only for you, but for myself, is that, you know, it's all about multitasking. Women are notorious for multitasking. I'm always telling my husband, you're thinking about one or two things. I'm thinking about five or six. That is why I can never find my phone. I can never find my phone because my phone is like the last thing on my mind. I'm trying to find every other thing. I'm trying to focus on every other thing, like on dinner, thinking about what I have to do tomorrow, trying to order groceries, paying the bills, just trying to do so many different things at the same time that honestly, like the little things like my phone or my keys, just to let you know, they're usually missing somewhere within my house. And my husband and my kids usually have to help me find it. But, you know, multitasking has become this big old thing. You know, um, it's funny because 
before I had kids, my middle sister has three kids now. And I'd be like, what do you do all day? Like your kids are sleeping so you could sleep with them. Like what could you possibly do now? Just having one kid, I realize how much she does. So kudos to you stay at home moms, because I know exactly, well, not exactly, exactly, but I can kind of feel what you are feeling dealing with like the house and the kids. And trust me, I know now because I am working from home and my husband was studying at home and my kid is at home doing homeschooling. So we are all here together 24 seven, like a happy family. Anyways, getting back to it. So we, I feel that busyness kind of starts becoming our identity, starts becoming who we are instead of having our identity be in Christ. And so God calls us to rest. I've made another video before that you can definitely check it out. And it's about the Sabbath rest. I Sabbath rest on the Sabbath, on my biblical Sabbath. But if you have another day where you feel you need to rest, totally disconnect from everything, focus on God, focus on your family, focus on you, our body needs it. Our body needs it and God calls us to do it because he knows that without that day of rest, like we're just going to run ourselves down. And just to let you know, he honors us when we honor him. And by resting, we are truly honoring him. So if you're too busy for prayer, then you're too busy. If you're too busy to read your Bible, then you're too busy. But how would it be if God was too busy every time we called him for our little things? What if he was just too busy to come and console us when we're hurting, when we're in pain, when we're frightened, when we're scared, when we're having all these feelings? What if God was busy and said, you know what? I can try to pencil you in at this time. Like, how would we feel if that's a God that we served? So that's not really fair for us to expect him to be there on our beck and call. And we're not willing to give him hours of our day. So I challenge you guys that as part of your resting period that you ask God to help you reorder your priorities. Now, I have said it before in my videos, I am not such a morning person, not that I don't want to be, it's just I'm so exhausted. So in this new year, what I have been doing is trying to go to sleep a little bit earlier. My goal eventually is to try to go to sleep by 930, but I'm doing it like 10, about 10 o'clock, 1030 or so before I used to go to sleep at like 12 and one o'clock. And that's allowing me to wake up a little bit earlier so that I can spend the morning hours with God, with Jesus, reading my Bible, reading my devotionals, writing in my prayer journal that I love to do. And I hadn't done it in a little bit. And God is showing me a little bit at a time how to organize my priorities and make time for things that are important. And God should be important to us. So he should definitely be like number one on our priority list. One thing that I stopped doing was looking at my work phone the first thing in the morning because I had in my mind that after I checked all my emails and checked all my chats for my work phone, I would go ahead and then spend time in the Bible, but it didn't happen that way. Because once I started focusing on my phone, whether it's your personal phone or your work phone, once you start doing that, like you get consumed in there and there's no turning back. So knowing that everything doesn't have to be urgent. And that's one thing that I'm learning and I will keep saying it again. Everything does not have to be urgent. Not everything is important. If I didn't do the clothes today, that's fine. They will still be there. The dirty hamper will still be there tomorrow. And maybe my husband can help me do it tomorrow, which he oftentimes does because I hate folding clothes. I will put them in the washer. I hate folding clothes just a side tangent, but you know, not everything has to be done right away. Okay. We need to pray for God to allow us to release some of that control to him so that he can reorganize some other aspects of our lives. Okay. We should never be too busy to focus and spend time on God because in reality, and I have it written down here, being too busy to spend time with God depletes me and you and drains our life and our energy. So if you want to live a very, very long life, a happy, a healthy life, definitely spend more time with God and really enjoy the rest that he has given us. Just as another side, I do a lot of side notes, just another side note. I've really been looking into minimalism, um, minimalistic wardrobe, minimalistic decor, although my house isn't really super, super like all out decorated, but I still feel like it's cluttered and I want to return back to basics, I guess, if you can say. I want to purge my life, my home 
from so many things that rob me of my happiness. And it doesn't have to be like something so amazing or like, oh my gosh, what is she hiding? Just little things. Like I have so many pajamas that are old that I need to throw away. My sock drawer is filled of holy socks and not in a good way. I need to throw away. I have tons of clothes in my dresser and in my closet. And I did do like a massive cleanup uh, right before... I think right before the summer and it was like a huge laundry basket full of stuff that I donated, but I feel like I want to do that again. I want to try to spend my time on things that matter to me and I want to spend my time on things that I know God would be proud of. And so I hope that you guys can do that too in this new year. So that's all I have for today, guys. I It was a pretty relaxed, calm video. I just really wanted to share this with you guys. I feel like in the beginning of the year, everybody has these to-do lists, these like resolutions and it's sometimes nice to just recharge in the beginning of the year to rest and figure out how God wants us to live our lives this year more close to him and less cluttered with everything else so with that said I hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up share it with anybody else and I'll talk to you next time